Hello. In this video, we're going to look at a solution to sum 67, which is a coding bat problem uh, under the Python section list 2. The solution to this problem introduces an interesting technique, and the technique is, is using something called a, f a flag to, to, to allow the program to decide whether or not an action has to take place. And so let's start by just talking through the problem, make sure we understand it. What this problem wants us to do is it wants us to write the code to take a list and then add, add up all the elements using this rule. Once we see a 6, we're going to stop adding. And then when we see a 7 again, we're going to start the adding process. So what that means is if I look at this list here, it means I'm going to add to the total, add to the total, add to the total. But then when I see a 6, I'm going to stop adding and then it's going to continue on and then it sees a 7 and it's going to start the adding process again. So if I happen to have another element here, if I ran this list through this this function, it would add 1 plus 2 plus 2. It would stop adding, stop adding, stop adding. Oh, start adding again, plus 1, giving us a total of 6. So when I work with this with students, what I often do is I act this out and, and it's it seems funny but acting out these things are actually really useful and and so what I do is I say okay I want you to hold your hand up in the air and imagine as long as your hand is up in the air any number I give you you're going to add that to your total but the minute you hear me say at number six you're gonna put your hand down and so I'm gonna keep giving you numbers and then you're not going to add them until you hear a 7, in which case that hand is going to come back up again. And that hand is acting like a flag. It informs, it tells you whether or not you should be adding the numbers or not. And so I like to use a Boolean for this. So I'm going to set my Boolean flag to true. And we're going to set our sum to 0. So what I do is I set my 4i in range loop. And I just, I'm going to traverse through the entire list. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the following, is I'm going to start off by saying if nums at i is equivalent to 6. So basically I'm saying if I run into a 6, I'm going to take flag and I'm going to set flag to false. And so what that means is that I'm looking at an element, you're a 6, I'm going to set you to false, meaning that I'm no longer going to be adding anything to my total. I'm going to say then, if nums at i, sorry, if flag is equivalent, if flag is equivalent to false, and nums at i is equivalent to 7, I'm going to set my flag to true. So notice what's happened here is. I haven't actually dealt any, anything to do with the summation yet. All I'm doing is I'm looking at the list and I'm going to come along and say, are you a 6? No. Is my flag false? And are you a 7? No. Are you a 6? No. Are you a 6? No. Are you a 6? Yes. Change my flag to false. And then I'm going to continue on. Are you a 6? No. Are you a 6? No. But then when I see the 7, it's going to change my flag to true again. And we could make this an elif if we wanted. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if flag is equivalent to true, what are we going to do? We're going to say sum is equal to sum plus nums at i. And then let's return sum. Now I'm going to ask you to take a look at this. And I want you to kind of see if, see if, see if, if do you think this is going to work? That's my big question for you. So have a think. And you notice it doesn't. So let's take a second. Let's talk about what we can do when our coding bat solution doesn't work. What we can do is we can always take a look at different runs and take a look at what's expected versus what we got. And we're going to look for a pattern. So if I take a look at this, I'll notice that the difference between what is expected and what I actually got is 7. What about here? The difference from what is expected and what I got is 7 again. 
So that's starting to kind of, you know, make me think. Let's look here. The difference between what's expected and what I got. Well, it's not 7 now, but it's 14. And if you kind of look at this, what you'll eventually realize is that with my implementation, what's happening is, is it's actually adding the 7 when it sees it. Because if you look at the order I'm running these conditional statements, I'm going to check if it finds a 7 and then change my flag to true. But then because this is an if statement, I then immediately add that number on. If we make this an elif and we hit go, my problems are solved. This is a tricky one. I'll admit that. And I really think as much as me talking through this hopefully is helpful, you really want to get out a piece of paper and work it through, work through some examples. The big idea from this one is the fact that you can introduce this, this, this flag idea, um, some sort of variable that just informs the computer whether or not an action should take place. You actually see these things all the time in different video games and software use. You know, when you, when you go into the options and you set a setting, that's a flag. You're saying, changing whether or not you want to see, you know, when you're playing a video game and maybe you want hard mode on, you flick that on. That's just a flag that then can modify other features of the game. That's a bit of an oversimplification. Anyways, I hope this video helped. Have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Take care.